All right, good evening and welcome to the November 8th, 2021 City of Helena Commission meeting. Um, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? City Attorney Joden. Here. City Manager Harlow Schalk. Here. Commit, well, Mayor Pro Tem, Mayor Pro Tem, excuse me, Halliday. Here. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Here. And for the record, Mayor Collins is excused this evening. All right, will you all rise with me for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible for liberty and justice for all. All right, that brings us to proclamations. And we have one this evening. <clears throat> Whereas the mission of One Mom's Battle, OMB, and the Family Court Awareness Month Committee, FCAMC, is to increase awareness on the importance of a family court system that prioritizes child safety and acts in the best interests of children and whereas the mission at the FCAMC is to increase awareness on the importance of education and training on domestic violence, childhood trauma, and post-separation abuse for all professionals working within the family court system, and whereas the mission at the FCAMC is to educate judges and other family court professionals on the empirical data and research that is currently available, such research is a critical component to making decisions that are truly in the best interests of children. Whereas this research includes the Adverse Childhood Experiences, ACE study, CDC Kaiser Permanente, Saunders study, US Department of Justice, the Meyer study, child custody outcomes in cases involving abuse allegations, and the Santa Clara Law study, confronting the challenge of high conflict personality and family court. And whereas the mission at FCAMC is fueled by the desire for awareness and change in the family court system while honoring the 800 plus children who have been murdered by separating or divorcing parents. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Commissioner Halliday of the city of Helena, Montana, declare November uh, 2021 as Family Court Awareness Month in the city of Helena and commend its observance to all citizens. And Madam Clerk, it's my understanding we don't have anyone to accept the proclamation or make any comments this evening. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Halliday, yes, that is correct. We do not have a representative here this evening, unfortunately. Okay, commissioners, any comments on the proclamation? All right, seeing none, that moves us to uh, item number four, board appointments. <clears throat> and. You all should have received the memo this evening, um, but the mayor is recommending the reappointment of Lee Schubert to a second term on the Business Improvement District and the appointment, appointment of Marsha Idol to a first term on the Consolidated City County Planning, Planning Board. Um, commissioners, any uh, discussion on those uh, appointments? Seeing none, we'll throw it open for public comment. Anyone who wants to, member of the public who wants to comment on those recommended appointments. Madam Clerk, you seen anyone? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I have no hands raised and no written public comment on this item. All right, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I will move to reappoint uh, Lee Schubert to a second term on the Business Improvement District. Term will begin on November 1st, 2021 and expire on October 31st, 2025. And the appointment of Marsha Idle to a first term on the Consolidated City Planning Board. Term will begin upon appointment and expire on September 1st, 2024. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. 
Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Halliday. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. All right, that brings us to agenda item five, a bid award for City of Helena Project 1912. Madam Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, good evening, Commissioners and Mayor. Want to uh, introduce the bid award for project number 19 12, the pressure reducing valve and Hale Malvin Interzone Replacement Project. I have Director Leland on as well this evening if you have any further questions around that uh, bid award and um, request you uh, make a motion or, or ask for a motion from the Commission if there are no questions. Thank you, Mayor Potem. Commissioners, any questions on this agenda item? Mr. Mayor Potem, I did have one question. Um, so, and I, I might have missed this somewhere in the memo, but I did not see it. Um, so I know I can see that the full amount um, is included under construction costs in the budget worksheet, but I could not see where the appropriation comes from for, for the project total. And so I'm just wondering if you can clarify that for me. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner, uh, where it's coming from is the water utility. It was budgeted uh, the previous year, but we did not get the loan. So we waited till FY22 because we needed a little more money. So it was a, it was allocated in the utility maintenance budget um, for this year. So we have $1.3 million to do the project. Um, and totally it comes out to 1.2 million. Um, so we're a little bit under budget, hopefully by the time everything's said and done. Thanks. Anyone else, any questions on this agenda item? All right, seeing none, we will open public comment. Any public comments on this bid? Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem, I have no hands raised and no written public comment. Okay, we'll close public comment. Commissioners? Mayor, I'll go ahead and move to award bid to Hard Rock, Hard Rock Road Building and Utilities Inc. for City of Helena project number 19-12 pressure reducing valve and hail Melbourne inner zone replacement project to Hard Rock Road Building and Utilities the lowest bidder, responsive bidder at the contract price of 963,585 and 50 cents. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner Lachlan. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Halliday. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. All right, that brings us to agenda item six, communications proposals from commissioners. Any comments tonight, Commissioner O'Loughlin? Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, so as uh, indicated on the agenda, um, I had put forward the possibility of reconsidering uh, agenda, agenda item 9E from our previous meeting um, this is in relation to the mall site and the consideration of a right of way for Vandalay and Oaks Avenue. Um, subsequent to that conversation during that administrative meeting, the city manager has pro provided us an update. Um, my understanding is that there have been ongoing conversations between the city and, uh, and the applicants. Um, so I would like to just see if Potentially, we could get an update um, from the city manager during the commission comments. I know that's a little, a, a little strange. I imagine maybe this was part of the city managers, but given that this is on the agenda um, during the commission comments, it would be helpful to hear an update from the city manager um, before I make any more any motion tonight. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Laughlin. And uh, Mayor and Commissioners, the uh, applicant has requested not to rehear that. They do anticipate bringing in a, uh, an application again for the dedication and reflection. Uh, we had meetings with the uh, team and the uh, 
uh, not only the engineer, but also the um, project developer and are very pleased that they have provided information that we anticipate will meet the expectations of our, uh, our cohorts and are continuing forward at a, a much faster pace um, as a result. So uh, as far as their, their anticipated work, our team is also setting up um, ongoing conversations with them, which were not scheduled previously. So uh, very, very thankful for a good working relationship moving forward and uh, appreciate the opportunity to provide an update. So you do not need to do that. The applicant has requested not to have you reintroduce it and uh, it will be coming back through in reflection of uh, the expectations of our city code and in an agreement with our team. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, do you mind if I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, <clears throat> city manager, could you provide us a little bit of detail on what the potential timeline is for reconsideration of this? Um, I know that they have been working with their um, anticipated tenants. So that said, so bond fees or benefits, excuse me, benefits being one, they are lining out the, um, the site itself. As I understand it, that includes some um, greater complication specific to parking and assurance with parking and meeting the expectations of their new tenants, which they're confident they will be able to. And uh, my hope is within the next month or two, um, I'm not sure, I hope to see it before the end of December. We're also working on um, the request they also had, which was separate, and that is bringing back to the commission the request for TIF dollars from that district in relationship to the um, improvements they would like to make on both the um, prospect and 11th. So want to make sure that um, not only are we thoughtful in how that process comes back in front of the commission, since there's not a TIF board, it would have to be a decision of the, the commission. And we'll, we'll have more to discussion with you all about that as we get closer in those conversations. But uh, I want to make sure that you know that there's two parts to, to the application. Overall, we're continuing to work with that developer on their um, larger parts and pieces to their project. So as they're more interested in sharing out what their tenants will be, um, my hope is that they'll be able to provide those those pieces of information. I'm confident, though, we're ready for them when when they're able to pull those uh, those new drawings together, which I don't think will take long. Thank you. Um, one quick follow up question to that. Um, so you mess you mentioned a, a separate part related to the TIF funds. Will the commission also need to consider any variances as it relates to, to this applicant? Just to ask a clarifying question, variances uh, related to the Vandalay Street or other portions of the site? Well, both, I guess. Um, just at, because you said we want to make sure that the commission sees all the different pieces of this, is are, are, are the only two pieces that the commission will consider is the right of way and the TIF funding or are there other potential items in relation to the to this property? Um, I'm not aware at this point. Uh, as uh, At this point, we are still just talking about Vandalay Oaks and then the potential development agreement specific to TIF. Okay, because I I'm not totally clear about um, the parking situation and the extent to which that would require a variance. My understanding is that it might. So I'm just wondering, in an effort to expedite things, is there is there a willingness from the city to consider all of these things sort of together, right, as a full development? Um, and I know I understand that the sum of that it will be based off of what the applicants provide to the city, but just based off of what we saw in an initial design, it looked like we would also be potentially looking at a variance as well. Um, if you're aware of information from the applicant that I am not, please let me know. But as I understand it from the meeting that we had, there should not be and they're reconsidering an evaluation of their parking. From what I understand, no, they're not asking for a variance at this point. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I haven't gotten any additional information. I'm just basing it off of the design that we saw. I think if you want to put in perpendicular parking, that would that require a variance? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. The uh, Commissioner O'Loughlin, the variance requirement would have been required if they had had, uh, and it wouldn't have been. <laughs> it would have been a variance. It would have been the exact same, let me put it this way. If you had not had a variance request in particular, you would be approving a dedication of right of way with um, the caveats, just as we had shared last time, which was that they were using perpendicular parking and that it would not have been in, a, in conformance with our codes. That is not what they're bringing back. They had already decided not to bring that back in and we're working on angled parking. Okay, thank you. And so angled parking wouldn't require a variance. Correct. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make sure that, it, you know, I think your, your point about seeing the TIF application at the same time is also super helpful um, because it is, I mean, I think as a commissioner, it, I have often found we get bits and pieces or this sort of rolls out over time and we don't get a full sense of what the commission is being ultimately being asked to approve. Um, so I think it's great that there's conversations. I don't know how much funds actually there are in the, I don't know how much has accrued with the increment. So I don't know what decision point there really is for the commission on that, but the the question of sort of what ultimately the commission is going to have to decide, it's helpful to see it all um, as the as the city, you know, city staff is sort of processing it. Can I ask a clarifying question, Mayor Pro Tem? Sure. Great. Thank, uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner O'Loughlin, when you say great to see the entire picture, can you, uh, are you, so I'm just going to ask the clarifying question. It's around a dedication of right of way um, for Vandalay and a separate dedication for Oaks. Those are a process with a, a street, um, a cross section and a street. It, it, no different than any other land um, right of way dedication for a street. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear. Are you asking that the applicant submit their entire drawings with the new? Or is it, um, which is not typical during the application for a um, right of way? I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm understanding your ask. Well, maybe just at, maybe I can ask a clarifying question back. So my under, so based off of what we had, both from the city <laughs> staff, but also separately emailed to the entire commission, it appeared that we had. The engineering design, but that that design would have also required commission action on a variance. So I think we already had that, right? Uh, thank you, Commissioner O'Loughlin, and Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner O'Loughlin, the it just it does, but during the design process, they could ask proactively uh, for angle parking, which is permitted were designated by resolution. No matter what, we would still have to accept the dedication, which is also part of that. Including the showing of the angled parking on the dedicated right of way. We have any follow-ups, Commissioner? No, I don't think so. I'll just say from my end, I did have a chance to chat with the applicant today, um, and it sounds like they're comfortable moving forward with a new proposal, um, and we're appreciative that there were these ongoing meetings now to try to, you know, head off, head off these issues. Um, you know, from I, I appreciate your questions, Commissioner, about you know sort of seeing the whole picture, um, whether it's variances or other pieces. Um, I did have questions for the applicant specifically about what it was going to do to the developable space on there um, and specifically building A, uh, which I think is the most interesting building that's been proposed for that property, but it, it wasn't clear to me. 
um, whether this is going to impact building A, but um, I still have concerns about that from other discussions that I've had um, about this property previously. But um, I can say at least from their end, from what I understand, they're comfortable uh, letting this um, process play out. Any other commissioners, anything on item 6A? All right, on to uh, report of the city attorney. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, commissioners, nothing to report this evening. Okie dokie, report of the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and commissioners. I want to share quickly uh, the work plan has been completed by our team and I will be sharing it out to you via email after this meeting. We'll share the screenshot of the current status of our work plan and then you will also receive the lined out activities within that plan. Uh, what you heard tonight, um, uh, Commissioner Dean, around the project for um, valve, this uh, pressure reducing valve at uh, Hale and Melbourne is a really good uh, picture of the distinction between the capital improvements that were approved in previous years and the new work plan. So we're still having to merge our capital improvement plan from the previous years that haven't been completed, which include this one, uh, for example, but uh, want to make sure that you're aware that that is an activity we are working on and the team is currently working on their process for capital improvement. So I quickly am going to share this, my screen with you all. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem, can you see on your screen the status sheet? Yes. Thank you. Uh, you'll see that the team is showing that they are on track. These are the primary areas that had been focus of the team within your strategic outcomes for the budget. These are the primary areas. And then as the work plan plays out, you'll also receive, for example, um, do you see this greater detail on in as well, or do you still see just the primary summary sheet? Do you see the greater detail? Okay, please. I'm always interested in seeing what shares and what does not. And I, again, will share all of this out to you all. This is the greater detail that will also be provided to you all. And it shows the percent complete within each of the specific areas. So those will be coming out to you tonight. But it does appear the team is on track, which I appreciate everyone's hard work at making sure that I was able to share this tonight with the commission. And I know that this has been an ask of the community for quite some time. And that is, what is it that we approve every year and where is the work? So this is this year's work. So far they're on track and um, uh, one quarter into our four quarter year, they're, uh, appear, they appear on track for their primary areas. But again, you'll have an opportunity to see the line item. Also want to make sure to say thank you to commissioners Logan and Dean for participating in interviews uh, today with our finalists for fire chief. And uh, also thank you to our partners in state and local fire response, as well as our union leadership for participating in this recruitment process. It's a very important position to the team and to the community and appreciate the time that, that you all have dedicated. Also, Nancy Perry, for being a part of that um, our, as an HCC representative. As we move through, through that process, I'll uh, continue to make sure that the commission is informed. And I'm not sure if Mayor uh, uh, Pro Tem um, Halliday, if uh, Commissioner Dean or Commissioner Logan have anything to offer up, I'll, I'll step back for a moment. Um, but I'm hoping as we, as I shared last time with you all, when we start these larger processes that we include uh, at least two of you in them so you are aware of what's happening and when um, at a better pace and are aware of what we're doing. Uh, for example, the um, ERP system, the ERP for our uh, finance and um, HR systems, that kickoff is happening and we want to make sure and I'll be sharing to um, Director Danielson and ask that 
you all be invited to have a look at what we're doing and meet the team as well as the HCC since they're a very important part of our budget build out and our, our work overall. So just more opportunity for increased participation. Uh, thank you for addressing item um, with regard to Vandalay Commissioner O'Loughlin. And then last, I wanted to remind the commission of the Good Hue Sanitary Sewer Connection request. At the last administrative meeting, uh, there was a public comment from Ms. Good Hue who had requested that the commission please uh, reconsider her connection. She is a resident outside of the city's limits and the commission did not approve her connection. She asked that, um, uh, that the commission remember that the sanitary sewer line that she's asking to be connected to is actually already on her property as an easement and it already includes a tap. It just needs to be completed as an, and approved. So I just wanted to remind you all if you wanted to introduce it again. And that is my update. Thank you, Pro Tem and Commissioners. Commissioner Logan. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, thank you. Uh, just like to say thanks to the city manager for allowing us to have opportunity in um, meeting the fire chief candidate that we um, sat down with for about a half hour today. It was a uh, um, very interesting conversation. Um, you know, it's fairly um, the recruitment process that, that uh, Ms. McMahon um, put out got us a good uh, candidate. Certainly look forward to um, visiting with the, the next candidate next week. Um, if I would happen to have that opportunity, but um, yeah, it was a, a interesting discussion and it, it, it's certainly always interesting to have uh, folks from with an outside perspective um, give you a little feedback on how they see your community and um, so thank you, uh, Rachel. I appreciate the opportunity and Renee. Mr. Mayor. Right. Yeah, good. Oh, I, I just going to say, I, um, agree with all the comments that Commissioner Logan's just mentioned. Um, I, I think it actually is kind of gave me the, today some, um, good opportunity to see another part of our city government operations, um, which provided some good insights for me. Um, I'm really excited to see where this um, candidate pool goes um, and excited for the um, next set of interviews. All right, thanks commissioners. Uh, number nine, communications from the Helena Citizens Council. Madam Clerk, do we have anyone? Mayor Pro Tem, I do not see the individual that was slated for this evening, uh, evening, this evening's agenda for the HCC. So if there's another member in the attendees from HCC, I'd ask them to raise their hand. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, I, I don't see any hands raised at this time. All right. Well, if someone else shows up or gets in touch, uh, just let us know and we can circle back to that one. That'll bring us to number 10 regular items. First passage of an ordinance branching, granting a franchise agreement. Uh, Madam Manager or the City Attorney Joden. Uh, thank you, Mayor Rotem. I am going to share my screen and it will be City Attorney Joden who takes us through the TBS print a franchise item here. Um, just wanna make sure that my share screen is working properly. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, Thomas, if you would like to, or sure, sure. I don't see it popped up yet, uh, but I can go ahead and get started. Um, so the commission will remember that uh, this item was um, first brought to the commission on October 18th. The commission tabled it uh, at that time. So you can go to the second slide, uh, manager. Uh, 
Thank you. Um, in in about June of this year, TDS requested a cable TV franchise from the city of Helena. Um, and I just mentioned it was tabled on 1018 pending some more um, information from myself and, and our consultants that we've been working with on, on the specific question of the term, a 10 year term versus a seven year term to align it with the spectrum charter uh, franchise agreement, which expires in 2027, if I believe, if I'm, if my memory is correct. Um, I'll just go over again. Um, generally, the federal government largely regulates most aspects of cable, uh, cable service, but a provider um, is required to obtain a franchise agreement. And in Montana, a franchise of this nature is granted by ordinance. So we go through the first passage, set a public hearing, do a legal public hearing notice, and then have that public hearing and consider the final passage of the ordinance, which approves the agreement. Um, the city has to engage in a good faith, reasonable negotiations um, with the applicant, but we cannot uh, we cannot impose unreasonable barriers. Um, and so speaking to the, the term and the considerations um, is one of the issues brought up on, on 1018 was the alignment with the charter franchise agreement. Um, I, you know, staff, myself, Eric, and Bob Dushan with River Oaks, uh, we talked about it. Um, we, we do have a concern that if we were to match it up and essentially be a six and a half year um, franchise term that it could be perceived as an unreasonable barrier to entry. I think there's a couple of other factors and, and, and Josh Worrell from TDS is, is on, the, on the meeting and he can speak to this in more detail. Um, but uh, TDS is, is um, investing a significant amount of money and it's gonna take them several years just to install the infrastructure to begin with. So, you know, you're looking at least two years plus before they even get operating and then they only have four years left. Um, it's pretty standard across the industry to do a 10 year or even longer uh, franchise agreement. Um, the other option that we could do um, is we could extend charters um, and engage in it with charter for some consideration to extend theirs to 2031 so that we can have a uh, uh, the similar or same open negotiating period. Um, I'm not quite sure what that gets the city given that um, there's so much, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty limited in, in what we can ask for in terms of a franchise agreement. And as we move as as technology moves along, you know, the, the question, and we have this question, and I'll talk about here under financial impact is, is the PEG channel. Um, as, as the commission is aware, the franchise agreement chart spectrum pays a 5% of gross revenue, TDS would pay the same. Um, any considerations above and beyond that, that the franchisee grants the city comes out of that gross revenue. Um, so for example, when they provide cable drops to the city county building or schools or the civic center, the cost of th that expense comes out of the gross revenue. In addition, the franchise agreement um, calls for, and this is also the same with Spectrum Charter, a 15% capital support for PEG access. Um, so as you know, we have one PEG channel, it's a high definition channel now with Spectrum, and the Helena C Civic TV runs that for us via contract. With this new TDS, if it were to be granted by the commission um, on November 22nd, if we get through first passage tonight, um, we would need to have future discussions about who to run that and how to run that. And obviously, you know, the, the future of PEG channels and having two channels, um, you know, brought, we've been largely on Zoom for the last uh, year and a half, almost two years now. Um, there's a lot of future planning that needs to go on with regard to that that future PEG channel that we would get with this, with TDS. Um, so, so going back, circling back, um, you know, aligning the the two agreements 
um, again, there's 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 not a whole heck of a lot of wiggle room in terms of what we are asking for um, with uh, franchisees. I will also point out that uh, Missoula is considering a franchise uh, by TDS. Um, I wasn't able to get an answer specifically where they were at. I just read in the news in, in the Missoulian that they were considering it. And I think overall, um, next slide please, manager. Um, yeah, the staff's recommendation is to grant the franchise uh, first passage tonight of the ordinance for a 10 year term um, that would bring what I think and staff believes is necessary and good competition in the cable market to Helena, which would be beneficial to all of the residents in Helena. And it's a it's a minor trade off um, for the parity between the two uh, franchise agreements between Spectrum and Charter. I can answer any questions the commission has. Oh, and I apologize, Rachel. Sorry, this is the this is the the new slide. I guess I'm the first one out of the gate, uh, commissioners. So um, I just wanted to go over the public information engagement that we have engaged in. Um, we have, uh, as, you, as you will recall, TDS came to an admin meeting. Um, back in the summer and explain their plans to the commission. And then just generally that, you know, we had the November 18th meeting on the Novus agenda, which is on the city's website. And Danae sends her email out to the public, uh, letting them know that they can access this agenda item. So the, the goal here is mainly to inform the public that this is going on and to come to the commission meeting and offer any comments or concerns they have. Again, if first passage tonight, we will have a legal, legal noticed public hearing on November 22nd. Thanks, Rachel. Commissioners, any questions for the city attorney on this item? Yes, I have a question, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Is it, I understand why, uh, you know, given that it would be six and a half years um, if we lined it up with the spectrum agreement that apparently caused an issue for them. Is it all possible to say, you know, starting in 2035, any like all franchise agreements, no matter how many companies there are, have to be renegotiated in the same window. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Dean, we would have to work within the existing contracts that we have at those times. That's that's the difficulty. I don't. I, I think it would be very difficult unless we could negotiate with the with the cable providers that we have contracts with in at that time. I don't think we would be able to unilaterally, um, I guess, terminate the agreements with a 2035 date. Okay, thanks. So Mr. Joden, and I'm sure I already know the answer to this question, but um, given the fact that the commission has no, no wiggle room to negotiate, no alternatives, no, no real option to do anything except, except the existing charter agreement with TDS's name on it, um, what would be the harm or danger to TDS if they only had a six and a half year deal since in six and a half years, the commission would be required to engage, enter into whatever contract TDS put in front of the commission with no wiggle room and no alternatives? Uh, I, I would rather, I think TDS Mayor Pro Tem could speak to that. And, and I don't want to overstate um, that there are there is no wiggle room in negotiating these contracts, but the term is, you know, is one of those issues that we worry about being a, a barrier to entry, especially with the, the amount of time it takes to uh, to enter. Uh, the market and build out the infrastructure. There is still other room for negotiation. So, for example, within this agreement, you know, we negotiated a peg channel that matches Spectrum, just like we did with them. We negotiated several locations where they can provide um, a cable drop. Um, so it's not it's not like it's take it or leave it entirely, but it is still somewhat limited. But the issue of the term, um, it it does raise the specter of um, if it becomes too short, I think the concern is that we may we may lose uh, a competitor and an entrant into our market. 
And so what's the timeline or what, what does it look like to talk about the running of the PEG channel? I mean, after the last uh, franchise agreement was entered into and the HD agreement was reached, it was like a painstaking ordeal um, to figure out with the, the franchise organization with Spectrum how any of this was going to work. And that was when HCTV had the contract, it was doing the PEG channel, it was um, just a mess in terms of who owned the line and how much it was gonna get charged and what was running where and what the city would have to pay or what HCTV have to pay. So um, when does all of that get, get figured out since it sounds like we're just kicking that down the road tonight? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Commissioner, or Mayor Pro Tem, um, we would start to figure that out uh, on November, the, the day after November 22nd. Um, there is, you know, there, and maybe Bob can, Dushin can help me with this. There are, you, there's no immediate timeline to start running that PEG channel, but then it does beg the, the question of why, why are we requesting it if we're not ultimately going to use it? And, you know, there's certain hours of broadcast time that you have to use in order to keep it. Um, I think we start to work through those steps uh, in figuring out, you know, is, you know, how do we run two peg channels? Does HGTV have the capacity to do that? How do we budget for it? So on and so forth. Because uh, uh, right now, my understanding um, is that HGTV is largely paid for out of the peg uh or i'm sorry the franchise fee that we get from spectrum and charter or charter and so we would need to and this is outside my realm of finance how we start to run that peg channel with the tds hosts um until we get some revenue from them so i don't think there's an immediate rush to get the peg channel off the ground considering they're going to be building infrastructure for the next couple of years so i guess um that sort of raises the follow-up peg question for me. Is it is it not a situation? I mean, what happens in other markets where there's multiple um, uh, franchise agreements and you've got a peg channel? Do you not just sort of run the same content the way that if I turned on my TV and watched USA Network, they would have the same show on, irrespective of whether I'm watching it on, you know, one cable network or another? Um, is there is it somehow that there would be a a different channel or if it's someone like HCTV to show um, you know the fascinating city commission meeting um, on both peg channels at at six o'clock on Monday nights. Yeah, Mayor Pro Tem, I don't know the answer to that question, but I could ask Bob um, if he can jump in to, to the answer that to the extent he has. I don't I don't even have cable at home, so I'm completely inequipped to answer that question. Mayor Pro Tem, other member, the members of the commission, I'm Bob Dushin, VP of River Oaks Communications. We've been working with the city on this and other matters, cable television matters. I'm pleased to be with you tonight. And to answer your question, typically what happens is if subscribers choose to go with the new entrant, and by the way, this is a non-exclusive franchise, if they choose to go with TDS, uh, I would think that basically they would be showing the same content on the PEG channel as Charter or Spectrum would be doing. It's just that some people would be subscribing to TDS, others would be subscribing to Charter. The other thing I wanted to mention is that in the current Charter Spectrum agreement, Charter was given 10 years as a franchise term, and they have the opportunity to extend that for five years. Either the city or Charter can say, no, we wanna go into franchise renewal negotiations under the Cable Act, which happens three years, before that franchise expires. Similarly, this franchise provides that TDS would be given a 10 year term and the opportunity for a five year extension contingent on both parties wanting to do the extension. So I did wanna mention that as well. Um, in terms of what happens with the PEG channel on a going forward basis, Thomas is right. Those are the sorts of things that need to be sorted out um, if and when the commission decides to give final approval to this franchise with TDS. All right, commissioners, any other questions? Seeing none. Oh, Commissioner Logan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. So I don't know whether this is for staff or the commission, but um, how much of a burden is it for to have these agreements and their terms out of alignment? 
Um, Would you like me to answer that? Um, uh, um, Commissioner, the answer is this is not an unusual circumstance. We've dealt with a lot of communities where there are two friend, two cable providers. It's not typical. It's not, um, it's not something that you see every day. However, by the nature of the new entrant coming in, they're going to need a reasonable amount of time to build out their system. And the cable acts provide that a city cannot unreasonably refuse to award an additional competitive franchise. So the answer to your question is the terms generally don't match up because there's an incumbent there, a new entrant comes along. Along the way, um, as Thomas mentioned, if and when the city decided that it wanted to give charter for four more years on its current franchise, that would be a matter of negotiation between charter and spectrum and the city. Um, and that's to be determined at a later date. The other thing, thing I would mention, as Thomas pointed out, this is a negotiation with TDS. The city has a lot of rights under the Cable Act. We are mindful, though, of what the federal law is and what we can do and not do. And if we were to say to TDS, hey, we'd love to have you, but we're not going to give you a franchise that goes beyond 2027, October 2027, TDS can make the decision. They, they decide they don't want to do business in Helena. Um, this is a very, I will share with you, TDS, and I'm the consultant for the city. Our company is a consultant for the city, and Josh can speak for TDS. I will share with you, there are a lot of communities around the country that would welcome this opportunity to have a new entrant in the cable television marketplace. And the other thing is TDS is going to provide the triple play. Uh, I assume they're going to do the triple play, phone, internet, and cable and they're gonna build a fiber to the home cable system. So in other words, they're gonna run fiber to, to, to the homes throughout Helena. That's very unusual too. Um, so I wanted to mention that again, TDS can speak for itself. Um, sure, there are things that don't align up perfectly. Um, we do see this as, as an opportunity for Helena. And uh, we are working with other Montana communities where TDS, is also seeking a cable franchise. Among those, Great Falls. And uh, there's another one, but I, I am not at liberty to mention it right now because they haven't formally sought a franchise in another in this other Montana community. So I hope that gives you some additional information. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Commissioner, seeing no further questions, we will open it to public comment. Anyone who wants to offer public comment on this agenda item? Madam Clerk. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, excuse me. Uh, I do not see any hands raised and I've received no written public comment on this item. All right, we will close public comment. Commissioners. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Yep. I would move to approve first passage of an ordinance granting a franchise to TDS Metricom LLC and allowing the construction, operation, regulation, and control of a cable communication system within the city of Helena, Montana, and set a public hearing for November 22nd, 2021. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Yeah, Mayor, maybe just one quick comment. Um, so I appreciate the applicant being on and um, uh, providing some additional information. I, I think just as one point of clarification, I don't think that the commission is, is opposed to having TDS come into Helena. I think it's great. I think it is exciting to have some additional competition. I think the, um, the, the challenge that we're faced with is that we're being told that based off of federal law, we have limited opportunity to negotiate um, a contract um, you know, that is you know, materially different than the contract with uh, an existing franchise and yet cannot, you know, I, I think I imagine that we'll be told the same thing when charter is back for renegotiation of, of their, of their. So it's just uh, sort of an, an endless cycle of not really being able to 
um, truly assess uh, the services that are being provided to the citizens of our community. Um, I'm, it, I'm look forward to hearing more from TDS on, on the services they're going to provide. I suppose ultimately some of this is about um, competition and, and the consumers will decide. But I think what we found primarily in rural areas is that service um, uh, is, is not always what what consumers would like it to be. Um, and it, we're in a difficult position of, of not really being able to represent or at least, you know, have a substantive conversation about what those services really should, should look like. So hopefully um, things go well and, um, you know, consumers are happy with the services that are provided and hopefully future commissions will be able to have conversations with, um, you know, franchises that, uh, about what really is needed in the community. So thank you. Thanks, Commissioner. Any other final comments? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Halliday. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. All right, that brings us to our next item, which is to consider a resolution establishing an application fee oh, for cable telecommunications franchise agreements. Uh, City Attorney Joden. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Manager is gonna help me with my uh, slideshow PowerPoint again. So, yep, um, this is a re resolution establishing the application fee for cable and telecommunication franchise and agreements um, on October 18, 2021, the commission uh, passed the ordinance establishing that a fee would need to be paid when companies apply for, for these uh, approvals. And also that night approved a resolution of intention um, setting the public hearing for tonight. So next slide, Rachel. Um, one of the considerations that we heard from, I think, a couple of folks uh, at the at the first uh, hearing at the resolution of intention was that the the fee, the twenty five hundred dollar fee for staff time, could be a barrier to entry. Um, I, th you know, staff feels that it's it's fairly conservative given the amount of time, and I think TDS is indicative of that. And we're starting to see more, and I have no doubt that we will see more even more complicated applications than just a routine, relatively routine cable cable TV triple play package. We will start to see fiber broadband by local companies. We already have um, Treasure State Internet and Telegraph uh, doing work uh, installing infrastructure. We have Montana Internet Corporation wanting to install infrastructure. And we have a, uh, interest from companies nationwide, even international that want to start to use our our rights of way and these uh, these are technical matters and they do take a, quite a bit of staff time so we feel that twenty five hundred dollars is is fairly reflective of all of the staff involved the city attorney's office um, public works transportation and the manager's time um, in terms of support we have not heard one other th uh, other than um, no no support for the fee we did here uh, at the resolution of intention proposal that the fee could be a barrier to entry. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so I, I guess I already jumped ahead. So the staff recommendation is to approve a, a $2,500 application fee. We believe this would allow this, the city to recover um, the costs that we spend on these, and they do take away time from other projects that the, the city, uh, the priorities the city commission has. Um, the alternative is no fee and that the budget would just be born, you know, gen, you know, whatever the city attorney's office, the manager's office, the clerk's office would be born by the general fund. Uh, transportation would have to be born by um, their internal uh, funding. I couldn't say for certain whether street maintenance could pay for that or not. And then, you know, public works, um, similar issue. Uh, I, I really do believe that this would 
make the city more responsive and move these applications along further. In addition to the $2,500 application fee, there is the charge for the actual costs of consultants and experts. And I, and I think if you were to talk to, you know, folks from TDS or some of the other potential applicants we heard from, having that expertise has moved this along with the city in an extremely fast fashion. I mean, we've gone from June to an ordinance uh, approval by the end of November with relatively little hiccups. I think that reflects a, um, a change from how we've done things in the past and trying to get up to speed and be at the forefront of how we process these and the application fee and the fees for actual costs uh, are part of that. So last slide on the engagement. Uh, so like the TDS, um, our form of engagement, and I think you will see this mostly from the city attorney's office is just to, and not to just, but to inform the public uh, via the website, the agenda, and the public meeting notification that the commission is considering this here tonight. And I can answer any questions the commission has. Commissioners, any questions for the city attorney? Commissioner Lachlan. Yeah, I guess just a couple questions for the city attorney. Um, so in in your uh, in the PowerPoint slide, you put forward that the alternative is to implement no fee. Would another alternative be somewhere in between zero and twenty five hundred? Sure, sure, Mayor okay. Potem. Yes, exactly. Yep. I apologize. I know... the, the PowerPoint we were the uh, we're running the first one through and. We had this, not making excuses, but we had this on the agenda already. And so we were we were trying to rush it and I've been on vacation. So yes, there is another alternative there somewhere between zero and 2,500, the price is right approach. Well, and I, the, the, I appreciate the information that we were provided during the first meeting about this, just sort of how you all calculated it. I know during that meeting, there was some questions around the amount of this fee and how it compares with other fees um, that the city imposes. Can you respond to that? I mean, how, how does 2,500 compare to other, other fees that, that we, that we've implemented? Okay. Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Lachlan, I'm going to go off the top of my head um, from the emails that we got that, that Bob researched. Um, so I rem billings was 5,000. Um, there was a town in Washington that um, imposed a $20,000 application fee. Um, so the, the how we came up with 2,500 was, and, and I and I admit it's a it's a rough estimate. We looked at what we did with TDS. We looked at what we might be doing with the future of telecom broadband. Um, we estimated the amount of time that staff has to spend on these and then calculated you know their their hourly rate um yeah, it, yes this looks like a fee that is a a lot higher than other current fees i would point out that we have not i think citywide have not gone through our fees. And I think that's the, the sort of the, the dialogue and the discussion that the manager and, and director Danielson have raised is that our fees have not kept up with the cost of service. And that's the book of fees discussion. So $2,500 looks like a lot, but this is, I would say, telecom, cable TV, franchise agreements are significantly more complicated. For example, um, if I remember off the top of my head, a subdivision, a major subdivision is $425. In, in my professional opinion, that is woefully low, given the amount of time, for example, that staff has spent on just the upcoming West Side subdivision. Um, so I, I, I appreciate that this looks like a lot compared to other fees that we have been doing, but you know, we're still operating on some fees that have been around since the 70s. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I think um, a, a conversation about all the fees uh, is forthcoming and, and probably warranted for sure. I think, um, I think your point about the question of whether or not it creates a barrier to entry is just one that I've been noodling, right? Like, I don't, I don't actually know. I don't have a firm sense. We've gotten public comment um, about it. 
And so I just, I, I, un, I understand that potentially our, our current fee structure is, is maybe not um, the best to compare to, but this is significantly higher, I think, than, than most fees that we currently impose. Is that right? Um, Mayor Pro Tem, I would have to, or Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Law, can I have to defer to Rachel and maybe Sheila, because uh, maybe my institutional knowledge isn't as good as I think it might be as to what all we charge. I mean, for example, building fees, they can get pretty substantial, several thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And just uh, before, before um, <clears throat> for in, in relation to building fees, do we also have a similar ordinance that we require that applicants pay the external costs as well? I, Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner O'Loughlin, I don't believe so, no. Okay. Um, Madam Harlushal. Hey, you're on mute right now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Commission. Just wanted to follow up. The return on investment is intended to show the dedication into the service. So the $2,500, it is very different compared to our other structures. But I also, there aren't like for like as it relates to, for example, um, variances, um, not excuse me, variances, but uh, vacations of rights of way, for example, those are charged at the so it is a fee the the dedication back to the property owner of their portion of a, a right of way dedication that is now being vacated is actually market value so depending on the time the the time in which a property is returned to the owner it could be from 5000 to 20000 and that's a, a rate that's outside of any of our control so um, what's nice here is that this is one of the first of all our fees that actually reflects the burden of expectation onto the city staff and then, and the city overall and its evaluation the intention being that our primary services are the ones that we're offering right now and in new services are beyond what we normally would do and in this case that is this is one of those situations thank you Mr. Joden, did you have something to add? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I would just add, you know, that the last commission meeting, the commission considered and granted a access license to some property owners that wanted to cross city land um, near Scott Reservoir. And I think I mentioned it at the time, you know, the granting and consideration of easements is also one of those subjects, I mean, near and dear to the city attorney's heart because it, we do spend a lot of time and, you know, you have citizens that come in that don't have the expertise and are hesitant to hire an attorney to do all the research for them. And so we have this careful balance of representing the city by trying, but help trying to move the citizens along. And I mean, for that one, as an example, I think between myself and the public works department, we probably spent excess of 20, 25 hours. Um, and I don't even know what the application fee for an easement is if we even have one. But if you, if you figure, the amount of time you spent, what my salary and benefits is, you could start to see why some of our fees are are under are undervalued right now, and don't necessarily reflect and take away from commission uh, priorities. So that's that's all I have. Thanks, Commissioner Dean. Thanks, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, so and and I know that. Um, Thomas, you went through this the last time, you know, how you got to the 2,500 number just based on the work that was done for TDS, um, which I think is probably a good model since that's what we have to work with right now. Um, as more of these start coming in, are you planning to, and if this passes tonight, are you planning to continue to evaluate if that, that 2,500 is, you know, high or, or not sufficient? Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioner Dean, I, that would be the expectation is that we would try to refine this as we move forward. As you know, if it becomes clear that this is um, woefully not enough, we would come back. Although, uh, you know, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think where we will 
find the fine tuning is this careful balance between um, how much we can rely on experts to try to take the burden off of staff, which would then lower the amount of staff time and thus the application fee. That's that's why we came up with this, what we believe is a, a conservative estimate for staff time. Okay. And I, I agree, yes, come back, um, evaluate it as we go through them and not let this be something that like has historically happened with Helena. You know, you get a fee and a resolution and the resolution gets buried somewhere and we forget about it. Or if we remember it, we don't, we don't ever update it. I, I appreciate that and glad that we'll be um, continuously looking at, at how accurate these are um, for the city. Um, so a couple of questions on the telecommunications front, Mr. Joden, you mentioned like Helena or Montana Internet Company might be looking at, say, laying fiber and might want one of these agreements because they wouldn't qualify as a utility. Um, and I assume they need they don't want to be doing a one off sort of opening permit constantly in a way that's just going to be an absolute nightmare for them. Um, so are we envisioning with somebody like Montana Internet Company, they pay this fee? And then at that point, what the city engages in an arm's length negotiation for a franchise with them, they're not, they're not subject to the federal law, right? So this is a new, different type of franchise agreement. Do we have any analogies in existence today? Yeah, Mayor Pro Tem, that's a that's a great question. Um, the answer generally is yes, we would be looking at some sort of, you know, right of way type use agreement. We are currently working with with Bob Douche and River Oaks Communication um, in redrafting and tweaking our um, use of right of way uh, ordinance to accommodate this this future because what we have right now does not fit very well. And I think I think that's how we perhaps got into some confusion with previous or previous and current providers and providing that clarity that yes, there would be need and that's part of this is that there would need to be permission from the city because the city needs to regulate its right of way um, and you know regulate the opening of the street, the reconstruction of the street and the management of the spacing between all of the utilities. Um, as part of that, we, we have developed a, I forget the, the, the terminology, but basically a, 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 a one dig policy that, for example, we, we've implemented in Rodney, David, David's crew has installed conduit in there um, so that we're not coming back in and opening up a street that we just reconstructed. Um, and that would allow the companies to come in. We would coordinate that with some sort of right of way use agreement. I don't know if it's a franchise agreement at this point, but yes, at ultimately at the end of the day, the, looking for an approval from the city to lay uh, fiber optic broadband infrastructure. And then on top of that, we will be looking at um, an ordinance and a master license use agreement for the impending small cell 5G deployment, which we will be seeing shortly, which is the small kind of, um, you know, your dorm refrigerator size boxes on light poles and other things that provide uh, wireless cellular service that is higher speed but cannot uh, doesn't have a as broad reach so they have to put more and more of these boxes and we've been trying to prepare for that for a couple of years now um, but that's a part of the the bigger picture of getting these um, telecom permissions the structure the fee the ordinance in place before they all start to get here so it, what 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 happens in the um, circumstances of like conflict, like take char uh, not charter but CenturyLink, who is you know does telecommunication services, but is a utility, right? They run their they run their stuff through their lines. They can stick stuff in our streets. It seems like um, because they're a utility under the PSC, would they fall under something like this? Are we saying they need to get an agreement, or does? Does their status as a PSC, you know, regulated utility trump? Uh, does that make sense what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah, Mayor Potem, you said charter spectrum. Or no, cent century link. Oh, century link. So, so somebody who is, you know, okay. ostensibly a telecommunications company 
we could say that they are under the city's definition. They come in to cut. We say, no, you need a franchise agreement. They say, not so. We're, we're a utility regulated by the PSC, so we have statutory authority to cut into your streets. Do, are we able to regulate that entity now, or do they remain sort of outside of the city's purview? Sure, sure. So uh, it, in my previous analysis of this issue, I don't think it hinges on PSC regulation. Um, there is an old statute in Title 69, uh, and I mean old, hundreds of years old, that speaks to the types of utilities that are allowed to use the right-of-way as a matter of right. Um, those are electric, telephone, gas, and telegraph. Um, so that that's the rub with that old statute is, is we have these new technologies that don't fit neatly into that use of right of way by as a matter of right. So um, CenturyLink, they offer their phone service, but they also offer internet broadband through that same, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna play with fire here, trying to, through a copper or coaxial cable telephone line. Um, which is in, it doesn't offer as high speed. Um, so we can regulate them in terms of what conflict with our utilities, our water, sewer, wastewater mains, trees, sidewalks. Um, but ultimately, uh, my understanding is they are allowed, like Northwest Energy, to use the right of way as a matter of right without a franchise agreement or right of way use agreement. Thanks. Uh, Commissioners, any other questions? Seeing none, we'll open it to public comment. Anyone wishing to make public comment on this agenda item? Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, I have no hands raised at this time. I have no written public comment on this item. All right, commissioners. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I will move to approve a resolution establishing the application fee for cable and telecommunications franchises and agreements to use the city right of way or other property for the installation of telecommunications facilities and amending resolution number 20488, Exhibit A. Second. It has been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Just one quick comment from me. Um, you know, I, I think this fee actually probably makes sense. I think the amount articulated makes sense for now. And I think it's worth checking in in the future, especially given the value of what these companies intend to actually try to earn um, off of these agreements. It'll be interesting to see a smaller outfits like Montana Internet Company um, or other sort of local organizations try to get in, whether it is a, a block. But one other thing, you know, for y'all to think about, because it's going to be a, a future project, is when you think about these seeds in the future, um, you can't always make it about the cost of staff time because there are lots and lots of things that the city does, especially with regard to its, its human residents, um, that if you charge staff time all the time, you're going to make uh, exorbitant costs for, you know, strange variances or esoteric activities. Um, and so you've got to be cognizant of balancing the human need, right, of, of the people who come in and ask for services from this city and, and the reason that we pay the decent salaries that we pay to our city government, that some of these things you just have to eat, right? And if, you, if you've ever worked for a public entity, you know that um, that is just something you do. It's part of your salary. It's part of your job. And sometimes um, a project you think is really dumb or you think really takes too long costs um, an outsized amount of money. You don't charge um, someone who's broke uh, more money just because you, you feel like they've wasted your time. So just be cognizant of that as you, as you formulate your fees. It can't be all about the city getting its money back. Um, that, that's going to be cross prohibitive on, on the humans of this, of this city at some point. Seeing no other comments, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. I apologize, Commissioner, I, I didn't hear you. Aye. 
Thank you. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Halliday. Aye. The motion carries four to zero. All right, that brings us to agenda item 12, public communications. Are there any members of the public who wish to make public comment on an item not on our agenda this evening? Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem, commissioners, I have no hands raised and received no written public comment. All right, we will move on to item 13, meetings of interest. I think we have a upcoming, um, do we have an administrative meeting next week and then a commission meeting two weeks from today? And uh, that brings us to 14, adjournment. Anybody got anything else for the good of the order this evening? All right, see you nothing, we're adjourned.